Hi, I'm Mike with Burris Optics, and today we're here to talk about basic fundamentals of rifle scopes, how they work, and some of the words you might hear that get thrown around at your local scope shop, or on the range, in forums, or even on videos like this one. So let's get started with this cutaway of a basic rifle scope that Burris has built for a lot of years. It's one of the most simple designs we can start with to really kind of get some of the terms and some of the functions down pretty easily. We'll start at this end, this is where your eye goes, and we call this the eyepiece because it's the one that's closest to your eyeball. The very first part of that eyepiece is what we call a diopter adjustment. You'll notice that the end of this eyepiece can rotate back and forth. That adjusts the spacing between this first lens closest to your eye and the reticle that's mounted right here in the, at the front of the eyepiece. What that does is it focuses and will let you customize the focus of that reticle for your particular eye. Everybody's eyes are different, have a little bit different prescriptions. Even guys that uh, have glasses sometimes like to shoot without them. Adjusting that diopter can make a scope very flexible for people to shoot with or without glasses and pretty much any natural prescription. We've got another video you can check out with a little more detail about how to adjust your diopter for the best view. There's a set of lenses here that we call the eye pack and then when you move in, you'll find this is where we put the reticle for you guys that are shooting rear focal plane reticles. We'll get into the difference between your front and rear focal plane letter, later. But this is where a rear focal plane would reside, and you have a power ring. It's right here in this neighborhood. That's where the ring that will turn back and forth to increase and decrease magnification of the scope. As we move forward, you'll see that this is a tube here. It's actually on a pivot joint. It's kind of like my finger that moves up and down on a joint right here is where that tube can rotate and out at the other end is where you'll find your windage and elevation adjustment dials. They're actually moving this tube inside of our outer tube to change our point of aim. That's how we get a scope zeroed to a rifle. If you look inside that tube, this is kind of where the magic happens of magnification. These two sets of lenses, they'll move in and out, back and forth, when you turn the magnification ring. When those lenses move in and out, that's what actually makes our target or our field of view larger and smaller. At the end of this tube is what we call the front focal plane. Again, that's where you guys that shoot front focal plane reticles, that's where your reticle actually is, and we'll talk about the differences in a little bit. Ahead of that tube, you'll see this guy. This happens to be a Burris proprietary design of what we call a bias spring. When this tube here is moving on that pivot that we talked about, it's pushed back and forth by these two screws, which are your windage and elevation knob. But to always give those guys a little bit of pressure in the opposite direction, so they're always pushing against something, or the tube will move back when we turn the knob the other way, it's just a set of springs. They just give a constant pressure in there. It not only moves the tube in the opposite direction of the screw when you're unscrewing it, but it also makes the tube really solid. It gives it a nice space to, to sit with constant pressure so it resists any movement during recoil. That guy has a really important job when you wanna make sure your shot hits in the same place every time. Moving forward here, we have a long distance of empty tube that gets filled with light when we are using this guy, all the way up to the objective lens. This end of our scope is called the objective, mostly because this lens is called the objective lens pack. That's the basic parts of a scope and how they work. We did touch on front and rear focal plane. I'll go into a little more detail on that. Because these two lenses that we talked about moving back and forth make things get bigger and smaller. If we put a reticle behind those, closer to our eyeball, it doesn't get bigger and smaller. That's our traditional crosshairs we've used for a very, very long time, is a rear focal plane reticle. It stays the same size. No matter how much you magnify or demagnify the target out the other end, that reticle always stays the same size. Now, if we put the reticle up front, like I said, the front focal plane, sometimes called first focal plane, those are definitely synonyms. You can call it either one you like. If you put it in that front focal plane, now it's ahead of those magnifying lenses. It's closer to the target. And what happens is when you magnify or demagnify a front focal plane, that reticle actually gets larger and smaller with magnification. It's kind of locked in to the target or whatever you're seeing coming in from downrange. If you were to try to apply that, what's the advantage or disadvantage, and why do people like one versus the other? My easiest thing I can do for a kind of play it at your at home exercise is to take 
two fingers, your thumb and your, and your index finger, and put them so that they are bracketing something on the wall, be it a window or a, a picture or a computer monitor or something like that, and make sure that they match. That, uh, that picture and your fingertips, they match each other. Now, this is a rear focal plane reticle and it can't change size. So if I zoom in and out, basically bring my fingers closer or farther away from my eye, I can see that these don't match that, that object that I was holding in them. They don't match the monitor or the window or the picture frame anymore. That's the same thing that happens in this scope. A rear focal plane reticle is only one size. So when you zoom in and out, it doesn't always stay in exactly the same proportion to what's coming through the front. A lot of guys really love that rear focal plane because it never moves. They just like seeing the same thing every day. It never changes size, never gives them something they're not expecting. The only problem is, we, uh, at Burris, we love to use ballistic compensation tools. We were the pioneers of the ballistic plex back in the 90s, and we've continued to evolve ballistic compensation tools all the way through to our Eliminator 3 scopes of today. When we give you a ballistic holdover mark, something that you can kind of calibrate to your rifle and know that if I zeroed at 100 yards, that's the middle of my reticle, and if I want to shoot 200, 300, or 400 yards, I'll elevate to one of those cool tick marks that Burris puts on my reticle. That holdover, we'll call it, is only good at one magnification. Because of that whole, you know, zooming in and out, things don't stay in proportion. So I can lock in, usually at high power, I know exactly what my holdover is at that high power. But as soon as I come off high power, it's not gonna be the same holdover anymore. That's where front focal plane comes in. If you look at uh, some of our, some of Burris's premier products, the XTR2s, the XTR3s, the Veracity lineup, and even our Eliminator 3 where we did a digital front focal plane, that idea is that everything stays in proportion between the reticle and that target. So if I use the same example, of my index finger and my thumb, and I bracket that picture, or monitor, or window, now if I zoom in and out by bringing my fingers closer or farther away from my face, what if I made them larger and smaller so they always fit that object? That's a front focal plane. The reticle grows and shrinks along with the target. The beauty of that is it makes those holdovers accurate anywhere. If I were to say my thumb is my 300 yard holdover mark and the index finger, that's my zero, my 100 yard zero spot, and it goes in and out together, then whether I'm at low magnification, high magnification, or anywhere in the middle, that 300 yard holdover is true no matter what. So that's how, that's why a front focal plane can be a big advantage if you're using ballistic dots. That rear focal plane, still tried and true. Guys have been loving that for a long time. And if you're one of those new dial for distance guys where you take your elevation knob and you're dialing exactly the distance you want so you can use the center of your reticle, again, rear focal plane might be your bag. That pretty much wraps up the basics of rifle scopes, a lot of those internal parts, and the differences between front and rear focal plane. For more information on all the reticles that Burris offers, the SCR, the SCR2, the new Wind MOA, and the caliber specific 6.5 Creedmoor reticle, along with all the other ones in our catalog, feel free to click the link in the description below for a full rundown on our reticle offerings.